Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk about sensation, perception, and attention. So the key point uh, overriding everything, which we've talked about already, is that perception is compression. Our eyes receive, you know, billions of signals every second uh, flooding in, and yet we see something very simple, concrete, and uh, understandable in the world. If you look at this image right here, you can see nothing interesting, right? You have a, a cylinder, you have some uh, shadow, you have a chessboard, just like this picture over here. Shadows, chessboard, what, what, what's, what's happening? There's nothing happening here. <laughs> Why am I even talking about this? Well, maybe some of you have seen this picture before. And if you have, you know that A, this region, this color of this square here, is actually the same exact color as the pixels here in B. In other words, if we zoom in and we just look at the actual pixels coming out of my screen, um, they are going to be identical between A and B. So now something interesting is happening, right? So it's kind of only when you zoom in on perception, when you look at it more deeply, that you really understand all the amazing things that are taking place in our perceptual system. Because fundamentally, the job of perception is to deliver this high level percept, this understanding of the world out there so that you can go on and get along with your life, right? And we've talked about this many times, how this hierarchy of detectors in the neuroscience chapter leads up to this kind of compressed overall understanding representation of the world. And this is really just an example of that, that our brains automatically take into account all the kind of geometry, the, sh the lighting, the shading, the shadows, everything to allow us to see not pixels, not squares, but a chessboard, right? Something coherent, something integrated, something simple out there that we have a lot of familiar with. We see a lot of cases, you know, the pixels in this scene over here are not that similar either, right? Um, there's a lot of differences in lighting across these pixels. Um, so this kind of stuff happens all the time and it's just not a big deal. <laughs> but it's only when you kind of dig in there and you say, wait a second, how is it that our brain can make these two parts look so incredibly different? Uh, and then you start to say, well, there's something interesting happening. So here's the proof, in case you don't believe me. If you draw these kind of very consistent uh, same colored bars through this uh, scene, and you can see that in fact, they are exactly the same pixels. You can also you know, uh, download the slides and zoom in and, and prove it to yourself. Okay, so there are some really interesting things going on under the hood to make that compression happen. And that's what we want to understand in this chapter. What is it that, that drives our ability to, to make the world simple, to compress all the complexities into this high level percept? As we've seen before, um, our awareness is focused on the high level path part of this visual pathway. And this is the key point about compression. So the, all this stuff is pixel level stuff, uh, the raw image sensory input that's coming in is all down here at these lower levels. We're not aware of those lower levels. Those parts of our brain aren't out there talking as we talked about in the last chapter in the consciousness uh, chapter, those, those parts of the brain aren't kind of intercommunicating with all the rest of the brain. So they're not really part of this larger attractor network of recurrent connections that are interconnecting uh, all of the high level neurons. And that's really where our, where our consciousness emerges is in those recurrent connections of the kind of more broadly connected higher levels of these pathways. And so we're aware of this kind of compressed final interpretation, the interpretation of the world that is divorced from all the particular details of the sensory input that drives it. The mantra is we see the world, not our raw sensory input. And there's just so many demonstrations of this and, and a lot of illusions and visual kind of uh, demos. So I love this one, the uh, giant person uh, next to the miniature person. Um, and so this is known as size constancy. And again, we see here 
uh, depth cues and uh, and uh, texture cues going back. We'll talk more in detail about those. What what are the cues that our brain uses to understand where this person is in this image? And because we have those depth cues, we perceive this person as being back there um, in in depth. And therefore, they seem like they could be basically typical human sized, right? Probably about the same size as the person in the foreground. And so when you actually take that person uh, and put them at the exact same size at the same point in depth, of course, they look miniature. Here we have a demonstration of color constancy, uh, this idea that uh, we typically see not the surface colors that our eyes are seeing, again, just like we saw in the last image, but we see um, the true color of the objects in question. So we have a lot of clues that are telling us that those are strawberries. Um, we get a kind of overall bluish tint as if we're looking through our blue shades, right? Um, and so we can kind of see, yeah, those look like red strawberries seen through blue shades. But the actual color is is just this kind of gray color. There's no red in here, but we have a very vivid sensation of actually seeing the color red. And if those of you who were sort of sentient beings at this time in 2015, paying attention to Twitter or whatever, um, you may have experienced this live. Uh, there was a big uh, kind of viral uh, sensation that of course psychologists were particularly excited about um, when people saw this dress um, and, and different people could see this in different ways. And it's still actually kind of a mystery to this day exactly what it is about this particular image that generates such a kind of uh, distribution of different perceptions across people. So when I look at this, this is a subjective moment here where we can really get a violation of consistency and reproducibility across people. So it really is this kind of uh, subjective experience coming to the forefront here. When I see this, I absolutely see a kind of off-white color with a, with a kind of gold color here. Um, so that's what it looks like to me, which is consistent overall with this kind of uh, gold and white uh, dress color. These aren't exactly in the same places as, as in this dress here. But other people see this as a blue and black dress, okay? And over here, I've actually taken the, again, the raw pixels and kind of zoomed them up. So when you go to a, a drawing program, you can just kind of click on those pixels so this is the actual raw color, and that's basically what I see more or less is those colors there, okay? Um, but uh, in fact, uh, half the people see a uh, blue and black dress, and I just simply cannot get myself to see that. I've tried, I actually, you know what I can do is I can squint, and when I squint at it like this, it's a really nice image of me squinting, um, I can barely see it sort of maybe but not really. I don't get that strong subjective feeling and I just can't see it as blue and black. However, this diagram here, very nicely made, uh, it's available on Wikipedia, of course, um, tells you exactly what's going on, that if you assume that you're kind of seeing some kind of uh, overall bright, uh, light, yellowish tone that you're seeing this through, uh, that the color uh, of the background is kind of yellowish and you should be able to kind of see that and then that would tell you that that you know you want to compensate for the the overall bright yellow tint and see the the true colors as these kind of blue and black colors underneath. Uh, however, if instead you kind of see the overall tone of this and interpret that as being kind of a bluish tone, um, and then the white becomes essentially that bluish tone, then of course you see this other uh, combination. And so it really is just which cues are is your brain picking up on? Are you are you which which assumption of the overall lighting is your brain making? Um, and then depending on that, you know your brain kind of snaps in and makes everything consistent. And again, the the really amazing thing about this is that subjective qualia of how real it seems and how how hard it is for people to see the other uh, interpretation. And I think that's what's really remarkable about this. Many other illusions, most other illusions that we're aware of, um, everybody kind of sees it and everybody can kind of flip back and forth and see it the different ways. Um, this one, you really have this strong individual difference. So it's really striking in that way. 
So Twitter, Twitter isn't wrong. This is, this is deserving of some real interest in, in the public. Our job here is to kind of blow open the doors of perception uh, and understand what's happening underneath. And of course, the doors of perception uh, is the uh, famous book by Aldous Huxley talking about the effects of drugs and this attempt to kind of see the true reality, okay? And there's this sense that, you know, we really want to understand not this illusion that our brains are delivering to us, not this high-level percept, but somehow the truth is out there in this really, you know, detailed red, green, and blue pixels. That's somehow the truth. But in fact, okay, when you actually think about what perception is doing, I think our high-level percepts are, in fact, delivering a much more true representation of the world because they are putting together all the different clues and they're telling us, for example, in these color illusions, what the true color of the, the fabric is. What is that thing like kind of in an invariant, in a constant way, um, as opposed to telling us just what it happens to look like in this particular lighting condition. So what's more true? Is it more true to see, you know, the raw lights or is it more true to see, you know, what the real fabric is kind of independent of whatever lighting condition happens to be uh, operating at any given point in time? With it, without even knowing it, with, a, with no effort, we automatically somehow get truth delivered right to our brains, okay? Most of the time, and we'll see with the illusions, all the, all the shenanigans behind the scenes, that's really, as scientists, what we, we're interested in is, is breaking down those doors and trying to understand all the assumptions that our brain has to make in order to actually see the truth, okay? Uh, so very interesting. People have long been fascinated, of course, with uh, the role of perception in delivering truth uh, and, and whether we're kind of fooled by what we see, et cetera. So these are really age-old uh, fascinating questions.